Hello everyone, Jeff with The Green Review here. Issues with climate make a lot of headlines and you may be wondering what short and long term effects these issues have on our gardens. First, we must define our terms. Weather refers to atmospheric conditions like temperature, precipitation, and wind at a particular location and time. Climate comprises the average weather conditions at a location over a minimum of several decades. Within a particular climate, there will be normally occurring extreme weather events that are part of the calculation used to create the average. These extreme weather events are normal in every climate. Climate change refers to normal, long-term changes in average weather conditions. Global warming is an assertion that the entire Earth's surface and lower atmosphere are warming. Man-made global warming is the assertion that human activities of burning fossil fuels and cutting down forests are the causes of global warming. People who use the terms climate change and global warming interchangeably are either uninformed or possibly devious. They are not synonymous terms. If the surface of the planet warmed, that might eventually change the climate of a location. On the other hand, if the climate of a location changes, it might not warm up. It's rare to have normal weather. The average daytime high temperature for today is over 50 degrees but the actual temperature is likely to fall short even if the sun comes out this afternoon. Whole seasons often fluctuate and are called below or above average. In the face of so much natural fluctuation, changes in climate are impossible to see until many years have passed. Looking at past changes does not tell you us whether it's happening now or in the future. A warm year or two or even decade don't necessarily indicate an overall trend in climate. Extreme weather events have always taken place. The next ones in the headlines will not be an indication of global warming or climate change. By international convention, the normal climate range for temperature, precipitation, and other weather information is calculated from the thir last 30 year base period. Even when we have 31 to over 100 years of information that would aid in accurately determining an area's climate. We just count the last 30 years. The shorter time frame you look at, the less accurate you will be. Look at today's weather and tell me what the climate is. You can't. You'd be more accurate if you looked at the weather of the past year. If you looked at the weather in the past 30 years or 100 years, you'd be more and more accurate. The 30-year data cutoff started in the early 1900s when there wasn't much climate data available to scientists. It helped scientists to have a standard time frame to work with when describing climate information. It was long enough to rule out an unusual year here and there in weather data while still allowing longer comparisons of climate in different locations. Every 10 years, the 30-year climate normal is updated. Scientists are currently using the 2010 to 2020 normal. The previous one was the 1981 to 2010. Some areas of the U.S. have 10 sets of 30-year normals for the 1900s. During each 30-year time frame, the temperature, rainfall, or other weather information may have been high or low. Instead of looking at the whole 100 years as one normal climate, we can compare smaller movements of temperature or other weather inside the longer time frame. Unfortunately, comparing each 30-year normal to another one tells us nothing of long-term climate change. When one older, cold 10-year period is taken off and a new 10-year warm period added to create the next 30-year normal, the shift in temperature can appear dramatic. But remember, the old 10-year data set is still part of the 100-year or longer data set for that area, the actual climate. And the 10-year change effect is much less dramatic. Because there is so much misinformation on the news about climate, we're often under the impression that the world's climates are normally static and unchanging century after century. That assumption is wrong and creates the fear that any changes we might see in weather or eventually in climate are going to be disastrous. 
In the distant past, cold spells within European climates have caused migrations southward that have led to wars, but not every change is or has been negative. Warm periods have been times of economic and agricultural growth. What's this mean to me? Why abandon the climate information over 30 years old? There can be no such thing as a new 30-year climate normal without throwing out 10 years of information. Don't be fooled by people claiming to be the, the, the most recent 30-year normal shows that a climate is warmer or colder. Look back at the previous 100 years for a much more accurate determination of an area's climate. Another what's this mean to me? Historians and climatologists have documented European warm periods from the Minoan, Roman, and medieval time periods. The European climates did not change. They stayed in the same place relative to the oceans, ocean currents, air currents, and such as the jet stream. These climates were not static, but they didn't change into other climates. Human activities didn't cause any of those warm or cold spells. Researchers found the warm periods were times of prosperity and advances in civilization. Crops grew better and produced more and longer, more in a longer growing season. People were better fed and healthier. Cold periods brought famines and mass migration southward that caused wars. Warm periods are beneficial to humans. Many people prefer warm weather. Just look at the southward migration patterns in the United States. Another what's this mean to me? Modern farming techniques and modern technologies in home heating have decreased the need for southward mass migrations and cold spells. You may have heard that the science of man-made global warming is settled. Whenever you hear that a supposedly scientific idea is settled, you must remember that the person saying such a thing is not likely to be a scientist. A scientist would never preempt future scientists from more discoveries in the future. Science deals in probabilities, not certainties. No scientific hypothesis is ever truly settled. Not even something as fundamental as gravity. Research is still going on that is discovering new facets of gravity. The Earth's climate is a complex system that has many influences. It seems simplistic to say that just one thing, man-made carbon dioxide, is responsible for global warming or climate change. People don't make carbon dioxide. They just recycle what is already there in nature. The news on climate change, global warming, and man-made global warming can be very confusing. Terms that don't mean the same thing are used interchangeably. Scientific issues are discussed that require more knowledge than the casual news reader may understand. Then there are the non-scientist celebrities and politicians making claims that if we ignore their advice, devastation will occur. A consensus of climatologists, meteorologists, geologists, and scientists of all kinds from the early 1900s to the 1980s believed the Earth was entering an ice age. Headlines shouted that the glaciers were growing faster than ever. The Arctic ice was increasing faster than ever. The polar vortex was spreading. Weather was becoming extreme. Millions of people were about to starve to death, and there was nothing that anyone could do about it. Except none of these things that they were concerned about were actually a problem at all. The same thing may be happening now, or maybe not. Only time will tell. The Earth's climate is always shifting without man's influence. So it's a good thing that scientists are studying so many aspects of it. For a while, warmer temperatures and more carbon dioxide in the air will benefit gardeners and foresters. Crop plants, garden plants, and forests will be more productive. How long will it take for the warmth and carbon dioxide levels to move into a, out of the thrive range and into the survive range? We don't know, but we are not there yet. Experiments show that it could be much warmer and much more carbon dioxide in the air will still help the plants. So we don't know which level the survive range and the slow death range will start. I don't know what the weather or climate hold in the future, and I look suspiciously at anyone who tells me that they do know. And this is Jeff for The Greener View. Thanks for watching.